Hi, I'm Dan Kabisky with the Society of Professional Journalists International Community. The relationship between Twitter and major news organizations has been in the news for a bit more than a week now. Twitter has labeled the American National Public Radio and Public Broadcasting Service, the British Broadcasting Corporation, the Australia Broadcasting Corporation, and the Canadian uh, Broadcasting Corporation as state-affiliated or state-funded news media outlets. This raised objections from all these respected news organizations. The label equated these respected organizations with actual government-run and government-controlled news outlets, such as Xinhua in China and uh, Sputnik sorry, in Russia. In response to the Twitter action, these groups have all pulled back from Twitter, refusing to post new material until the situation is rectified. Late in the evening, April 20th, Twitter removed all labels from all the news organizations, essentially once again equating institutions such as the BBC and CBC with RT and Xinhua. With me today is the editor-in-chief of the CBC, Brody Fenlon, to talk about the CBC decision. But first, Brody, if you could just talk about the news that just came up uh, about the removal of all of these um, uh, uh, labels. Uh, we do have a CBC uh, statement saying that they you are reviewing the latest development and will leave its Twitter accounts on pause before taking any next steps. Do you have anything new you can add uh, to that statement? <laughs> No, um, not not really. I mean, it, this is uh, this week alone. Our, our the label on our main CBC account has been changed four times. So, as you as you noted in the introduction, um, uh, Elon Musk pursued a new policy where public media organizations would be labeled either state affiliated, government funded, or publicly funded, and posted a definition of what each of these labels meant. And so in our case, we were labeled as government funded, uh, which according to Twitter means that, uh, that we have government funding as a source of funding, but as well that the government may have influence over editorial. So that was our problem because the government has no influence on editorial or our journalism at CBC. And then as the week progressed, um, because the CBC actually has is a mixed revenue model, public funding, but also we generate uh, income through other means, including advertising, distribution, cable subscription. So our, our label was changed by Elon Musk to say 70% publicly funded and then changed again to say 69% uh, publicly funded because I think someone challenged him to say that it wasn't accurate. And on we went. So so last night, the labels came off, not just us, I, I, I guess all media that had been labeled. And um, along with changes yesterday, which included removing the blue check verification from those who are not paying it. So we see on, on a number of our Twitter accounts, we're no longer verified. I lost my verification as well as many, <laughs> many journalists did. So that's the state of things. And, and uh, our, as we said in our statement, we're just pausing to assess. We, we had paused our, our Twitter activity on our official branded accounts uh, after this label was applied, um, raised objections to it for the reasons I said. And then, and then um, today we've just said we're going to take our time and review this latest change and not, not unpause our activity yet, just take our time to assess it. Could you um, just kind of take us a little bit behind the scenes and talk about what went on in the decision to pull back from Twitter um, from these improper labelings that you had, uh, you've you already talked about. You, as much as you can tell us, could you tell us you know, why and what kind of arguments went back and forth uh, in, in discussions uh, in Canada? Well, the first thing was we watched as it was playing out with NPR, PBS, and the BBC, as you mentioned. So we we saw this was coming our way, probably, and uh, and we saw the objections that were raised by each of those broadcasters, including the the option, you know, in the in the states to stop 
publishing. Now, the BBC, of course, objected, and then their label was changed to publicly funded, which was more palatable. For us, I mean, uh, you know, we were we're very concerned about the the uh, misinformation about what we do in terms of professional journalism versus propaganda, and and this idea that the government can influence or direct our journalism is so important to us uh, that it's clear in people's minds that's not the case. And and there was no doubt that that was what Twitter was saying in its label, but also explicitly and implicitly applied uh, implied in, in things that uh, Elon Musk has said about funding equaling influence and media bias. So we just we we knew that we would this was something a line that we couldn't really allow to stand and and as I've said elsewhere I mean we just couldn't in good conscience continue to publish fact based journalism on a platform that was suggesting there was government influence on on our our work. It it, it does seem that a lot of people misunderstand what public financing and government control of media are. Uh, could you just do a, g- give somebody a quick, give us a, just a quick definition of the way you see that difference? Sure. I mean, in, in CBC's case, so we are what's called a crown corporation. So we are, uh, you know, we are set up by the federal government and then funded with an arm's length oversight. And in the case of the CBC, a public broadcaster, we are established under a law in Canada, it's the Broadcasting Act. And in that act, the independence of the of the organization in terms of editorial content is enshrined in law. So that's point number one that we had to make. And so, yes, uh, a significant chunk of our budget comes from the taxpayers. It's publicly funded in that way. It is a it is a, an appropriation from the federal government voted on by all members of parliament. And then, uh, but the government has no influence, no involvement in, in terms of our day-to-day uh, operations or what we do around stories and, and our journalism. Um, and then of course, as I said, we're also, we, we, we generate income of our own, which supports a, lar- a large piece of our journalism. So arm's length um, and, and then, Separate from what's enshrined in legislation, then there's our own journalistic standards and practices. Those are publicly available. We adhere to them. We're publicly accountable to them uh, in terms of an ombudsman process that's independent of us. And so there are a lot of checks and balances to make sure that what we do is fair and partial, accurate and balanced, you know, some of these core principles of of our standards. Okay. Um... What do you see uh, as the future of, of news organizations and Twitter? Do you see more conflicts coming forward or? Yeah, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it's certainly erratic right now. Um, uh, it, it seems that um, the direction Twitter's taking changes sort of week by week. Uh, so if it, it's it's an uncertain time for that platform, I think more broadly speaking, you're seeing a real shift in in sort of uh, third party distribution and news organizations. I saw the news yesterday about BuzzFeed, and that is a news you know company that was really built on Facebook distribution and third party uh, social media. So I I think there's a reset happening around these platforms and and um, but I'm I'm not sure where it goes, which is why we're we're taking our time and just we're not going to be reactive. And every day might be a different approach to Twitter based on what Elon Musk does. We're just going to sit back a bit and watch. And and how how did the line troops? How did your you know in the field reporters and editors? How did they react to well first the the labeling and then the action taken by uh, CBC management? Well, the first thing to know is that we did not tell our staff they have to leave Twitter or stop using Twitter and and it's up to them. Although I should say we have f- long preceding this, we had a new policy. We were very clear with our staff that we did not expect them to be on social media on their personal accounts for us or on our behalf. So we've been really clear and encouraging people to step back from these platforms, including Twitter. Uh, because it's not necessarily a healthy place. There's a lot of harassment. 
Uh, but having said that, it's still a source of information and they're, they're, you can't just ignore Twitter. So we did not ask people to leave. We've just focused on our uh, official branded accounts. Having said that, I think the reaction has been um, pretty, I, I mean, people get it because they under, they, they've seen what's happened. And it's prompted uh, actually quite a, a, a robust debate in Canada about the CBC, about how we're funded, about whether or not we're independent. And there are arguments on both sides. Um, and I, that's a good thing, actually. I, I welcome that debate because I think it does lead to at least some clarity because as you know there there is confusion about everything confusion about how journalism works confusion about the funding and influence over journalism so i welcome opportunities to talk about what we do uh but having said that i think our staff are just they're also in a wait and see approach right now mm -hmm. okay yeah um you mentioned the uh the issue of safety for for your journalists with online presence uh, you were kind enough to be part of a discussion of that uh, in, right. in, uh, about a year ago, and people who are interested in that can get that uh, at our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, just to, to close this off, really, you've been very kind. Uh, I know you have a very, very busy schedule, and uh, you're able to squeeze this in. Uh, do you have any final comments or anything else you'd like to bring up uh, in terms of this issue that, that we haven't talked about yet? No, except to say that I think uh, we all have a, a job to do uh, explaining to the public this difference. Uh, what is professional journalism? What do these standards mean? And, and uh, I, I mean, I, I, so I've used this as an opportunity to write a blog and I wrote an op-ed in, in one of our newspapers here just to explain how sacrosanct the principle of independence is for journalists and newsrooms that are credible, that this is this is everything for us. And if the if the audience uh, doesn't get that, then we're lost. <laughs> I mean, it's the basis of our public trust. It's the basis of everything we do. And and I think it's important to stand up for at least for that principle and make sure people understand that it, it, it drives everything, and to not allow um, Twitter labels to start to confuse or distort that meaning for people well uh what a wonderful uh closing comment that was that was uh spot on and i think uh, the, all of us in the profession stand with you on on those ideas and those uh principles uh brody uh, fenlin uh editor-in-chief for the canadian broadcasting corporation thank you very much for being with us today my pleasure thanks for asking <laughs>